Hello students. All right, in a previous video, um, we derived the uh, Taylor polynomial that was uh, this expression here, um, given f of x and the fact that um, f is uh, has n continuous derivatives. Um, okay, so what we're going to do in this video is um, we're going to um, derive the uh, remainder term. Now the remainder term will ultimately give us um, an expression for the error um, that is the absolute value of the difference between f of x and pn of x, p sub n of x, um, uh, so we can see how good of an approximation we have. Um, it also give us some sense of um, how good the approximation is near the um, expansion point. Um, okay, so let me also point out one more thing here. Um, sometimes you will see um, uh, in textbooks um, that f is whoops that f is in c n plus one. It'll have n plus one derivatives. Sometimes you'll see um, a slightly weaker condition, and that is that f has n continuous derivatives, um, and um, that uh, f the n plus one derivative exists. Um, so um, it, it is often going to be um, either uh, either this condition, n plus 1 continuous derivatives, or the slightly weaker condition. Um, I'm just, um, for the sake of this video, I'm going to just assume one or the other of these, um, and I'm just going to kind of sweep that under the rug for the moment, all right, just to get to the derivation. Now, um, oftentimes you will see this expression in a lot of calculus texts, where c is some number between x and x naught. Um, Okay, we're going to see how to derive, but well, we won't derive this expression here, but um, we will um, actually derive um, the integral expression of the remainder term, and then um, I'll give you a hint as to how to get this term from this one. Okay, so um, recall we have the uh, fundamental theorem of calculus, right? If we integrate f primed, um, then uh, we'll get f back again, and then we'll just substitute x in, right there, and then we'll subtract f of x naught, um, that expression there. Okay, now keep that in mind, because um, this will also apply if we had two primes right here, then we'd have f prime of x minus f prime of x naught. Um, we'll keep that in mind. We're going to use that later. Okay, so um, what we're going to do is um, we're going to use integration by parts on this expression. So um, I'm going to let u equal f primed, then du of course, will equal f double primed dt, and uh, you see that expression here. And then um, I'll let dv equal um, dt. Whoops, I got to get a d in there somehow. And then v will equal t, and uh, you see that um, here and here. So we'll have um, uh, u uh, v minus um, the integral of v du. Uh, VDU. Okay, so um, uh, let's uh, simplify this expression here. And um, okay, so we'll substitute the x in for the t's and the x naught uh, for the t's here. Um, this expression we'll leave alone. And then um, I'm going to do um, a little analyst uh, technique here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract x times f primed of x naught and I'm going to add x times f prime of x naught. Essentially what I've done here is I wrote zero in a clever way. Okay, so I've added nothing to this expression here. Uh, I've added zero to this expression here. Okay, um, now what I'm going to do here is um, in this expression, it's a little bit simpler, I'm going to factor out this um, f prime of x naught and I'll be left with x minus x naught here. This expression here, I'm going to recognize this as the fundamental theorem of calculus. Remember I mentioned just a few moments ago that um, uh, what we did up here um, we can do down here. So I can factor out the x here and then I have f prime of x minus f prime of x naught left and remember um, I can then write that as the integral um, like we did here. Imagine we had primes here. Um, I could write that as f double primed, um, the integral of f double primed and that's exactly what we're going to do here. Um, so this expression results from the Fundamental Theorem of Calculus, which I've abbreviated FTC, Fundamental Theorem of Integral Calculus, and this expression is just simple factoring out the f primed, and the only thing left here is um, the integral of f double primed uh, of t, t dt. Now notice that I have this integral here and I have this integral here. Um, I'm going to combine these two and I'm going to have um, 
I'm going to push the x into the integral, and I could do that without pedal t because this is an integral with respect to t. And um, when I do that, I'll factor out the f double primes of t's, and I'll have x minus t um, in the integrand. So um, here is our um, polynomial for f of x. Um, that, um, that came from, remember, I factored out the f prime of x naught. Um, and then um, I have this remainder term that I mentioned. I have the x minus t, and I have the f double primed. Um, and then, of course, we can just keep doing this, and by induction, we would get um, the Taylor polynomial. And um, this, um, if we did this again, we would get another power of, um, so if I did this for r2, I would have a squared here, and this would be a third derivative. If I did this for r3, this would be um, cubed, and this would be to the fourth derivative. And anyhow, um, you get this remainder term. Then, if you use something called the integral mean value theorem, um, you can show that um, um, you can um, um, show that uh, this remainder term um, comes from this one. All right. Good luck.